All right, this is Joshua Jernigan, Ashy Knuckles with StandingFight.com, here with one of the best middleweight fighters in the history of this game, Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Bernard, what's going on? Everything's good, man. Just got finished wrapping up. We were some great sound bites. I see you had your, your camcorder rolling, man, and, uh, you know, here to enjoy it, man, and then get ready for what really counts. Saturday night HBO, big fight. Warren Diaz, as of course, uh, Houston favorite, and also you have uh, Paul Magellan. All right, um, I see you down here in Houston for your support for Juan Diaz. Also, because you promote him, how do you see the fight playing out this weekend? I see a style. I see a style. Style versus another style that's totally the opposite. And when you got that, you have pressure, and you got you got movement, you got flash, you got you got charisma, you got showboating. Um, everybody know what Paul does, and what Paul does is, is what it's worked for him, and that means that he he, he throws a lot of punches and keeps his hands down low, and and, and he taunts you, and he, he, he you know do all the things that can can distract the fighter and bore sort of you know. Uh, 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 board of the fans, but at the end of the day, uh, he comes to fight, and he's a real respected guy in that weight class. But uh, Diaz is one of those type of guys. He don't have the bull for uh, being somebody different. Absolutely. He got that name honestly. He got that name because he earned the name, um, and and it, it showed many many times before. Win, lose, or draw, uh, he's coming to bring it. And most sometimes uh, it didn't work in his favor, favor in his last two fights. But we all know, but that's that's the type of tightrope that he walks. So having that mentality, that personality from an experienced fighter uh, for many years, I can tell you, buckle up, be on time, have a fresh uh, tape in there because there's going to be some punches rolling and flowing. Absolutely. Uh, he mentioned the possibility of probably... I like Diaz too, I'm going to tell you. Oh, <laughs> Malinaji mentioned the possibility of possibly getting robbed uh, this weekend. Uh, do you think he should be more concerned with his opponent instead of the judges and the referees? Well, if I was on the street and we go out to the different neighborhood and the guy said, man, I want to get robbed, you get robbed. You already claimed it. You know, but he might not get robbed like he thinks he's going to get robbed. So you can get robbed and you rob yourself by thinking you're going to get robbed. You know what I mean? You, you, you have to understand this. When a fighter says to everyone, from a psychological point of view, that it's a chance that the judges or referee or whatever uh, might not be fair, you're already setting yourself up for an excuse. And I'm Diaz, I'm eating it up, but I'm eating it up in a way where I'm not going to stop focus on what I'm, what I'm going to do. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it even more because I want to make him think uh, that um, he ain't going to win this fight. And if he thinks one reason is because he can't get a decision, then I'm going to show him that no, this is the reason you're not going to win. And that's putting pain on him. So when a fighter says that, it's really like, to me, it's like a red flag saying, okay, the guy is running about this, he's running about that. What about just leaving the judges in your hands? I mean, but, you know, everybody got their own way of dealing with things. I just think with a guy really adamant and going through a long history of what led up to this fight, I think when you concentrate on that more than your opponent, I think you are slightly distracted, and he's going to have to sleep with that for a day and a half, and, you know, that can be a, a negative to him. Absolutely. Uh, Bernard, you're coming off of arguably the best performance of your career in dismantling the current undisputed middleweight champion, Kelly Pavlik. Bernard, how long can you do this, man? I mean, I, I think I can do it as long as the economy treats my pockets right. Absolutely. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's not about ego um, with me about who I can beat, who I can't beat. Um, because my whole thing is that to be even thinking about boxing, whoever it is, I have to be motivated to the point where I feel I have something to lose and I also have to be paid handsomely because even though people don't like hearing athletes talking about they want more money, so I try to refrain from that, but I try to tell people that at 44 years old, no matter how good my skin look, no matter how good my body look, uh, the doctor warned me that my body can't take what a 19-year-old body could take or when I was 25. The reality is five months or four months from January, I will be 45, and 
what my body took at 23, no matter how great I might look, it can't take it like it took it then. And so just on that alone, ego at this stage of my life is at the is number 10 and what motivates me and how much they're gonna pay me and the risk gotta be e equally or above the money will make Bernard Hopkins go and I have to be motivated and the motivation has to be the person it has to be a challenge I would love to be the underdog because that definitely always motivated me but just to go prove that I can do it because I've done it before I'm not thinking like that anymore. Okay. Um, a guy that you fought 10 years ago is coming off of uh, Roy Jones Jr. He's yeah. coming off a win off of I have no Jeff interest Lacey. in Roy Jones. Okay. Roy Jones, Jr. Roy Jones Jr. doesn't even get the crowd rolling. Roy Jones Jr. fight went out the door when Joe Galzaki humiliated him and embarrassed him. And why do that? Because I'm beating the shell. There's no personal thing I got in my, in my, in my soul anymore to fight Roy Jones in 2009 like I had it four or five years ago because I beat two guys that really ruined his career and that was Tarver and Glenn Johnson. I beat those two guys so I can live with that if I never get Roy which I don't, I don't believe I will. Mm -hmm. Is there any money in fighting Chad Dawson? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's more money in fighting Adam Mack because he's a cruiserweight. Oh, yeah. Look at my body. I got I to gotta go up to at least 200. Absolutely. So people would say, well, wait a minute. Bernard might be biting off too much with you. That's what I need. So to me, what I told you about that risk, Bernard fighting that cruiser at 200. That's the risk. Bernard, thank you for your time.